like to thank the woman of the house, Pastor Ines Sylvia Youngson and Uncle Paul and the entire church leadership for giving me this opportunity to share the word with you all this morning. Hallelujah. Let's kindly bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Father, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we surrender everything to you this morning and we ask Holy Spirit that you alone have your way in this place. In Jesus' name we pray for thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. So the title of my message this morning is Impossibility with Man and Possibility with God. Amen. Amen. Impossibility with man and possibility with God. And my main text is taken from Luke chapter 18, verses the 27. And I read, it says, And Jesus said, What is impossible with man is possible with God. Amen. Amen. Please, I want you to repeat this after me. And Jesus said, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Hallelujah. I believe this is not the first time we have heard this verse. We've heard it countless times. Haven't we? Who here hasn't heard this verse before at all? You haven't come across, you haven't heard the verse, you haven't heard the phrase anywhere that with man is impossible, but with God it's possible. Who here at all has it heard it? So I believe that we all have come across it. And it's something that we, I, I believe that it's something that we have heard several times. It's something that we, we may have read several times. But I also believe that the Spirit of God wants us to know something about it that we may not yet have put our minds on or averted our minds to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. So we all know the meaning of impossible, I believe. All of us. The word impossible. It's a very common word we throw about all the time. Ah, it's impossible. It's impossible. We all know what it means, don't we? Yes. But I let's consider this a refresher. I would want to read out what the dictionary says impossible means. So impossible means something that is not able to occur. Something that is not able to occur. Something that is not able to exist. Something that simply cannot be done. Something very difficult to deal with. Something which is very unreasonable. And something which is unmanageable at all. That is what impossible means. Something that cannot be done. Like you can't even turn, you can't try, you can't manage it. It simply cannot be done. And we know what the opposite of impossible is, don't we? Can I hear a chorus? What's the opposite of impossible? Possible. We all know what possible is. Possible means that it's, it can be done. It can be done. It's possible. It can easily be done. Hallelujah. And so what I'm saying basically with our, with the topic is that what cannot be done with man is easily done with God. Are you, is, is anyone getting me? What cannot be done what cannot exist? What cannot be manageable? What, what cannot be done with man is easily done with God. Hallelujah. And I want you to underline the word easily. That is a very, very important word that I believe the Holy Spirit wants us to take cognizance of. Hallelujah. 
And beloved, I'd like to ask, how many of us here have not faced impossible situations in our lives? Let's be honest. Have you ever been in a situation where it feels, you have actually said those words, ah, this one here, it's impossible. How many of us have, have, have been in impossible situations? Can I see your hand? Have you ever been in, wow, we have so many people who have never been in impossible situations. We give all the glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. But all around us, with everything that we see each and every day, with the things that we experience, Amen. I believe that as human beings, we have been in situations that seemed impossible. And I believe that that is why the Lord shows this word for us in this place today. Hallelujah. And um, somebody please say after me, then came Jesus. In the midst of our impossible situations. In the midst of our impossible situations. Then came Jesus. Hallelujah. And so today's sermon, we are going we are, we are taking, we're going back. And when I keep on saying we 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 are wondering. I mean, me and my body, the Holy Spirit. We are taking you back to the Bible. We are taking you back to the source, to Jesus. And we are going to look at some impossible situations that became possible with God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we are going to the book of John. Who knows what is in the book of John? When, when we mention the book of John, what comes to mind? What comes to mind, anybody? The miracles of Jesus. That's where you find them. Hallelujah. And so, let's kindly discuss a few. So, the very first one. I believe we all remember that there was a certain wedding at a place called Cana. And they ran out of wine. You can find this in the chapter 2 of John, the verses 1 to 12. So Jesus Christ attended this wedding in Cana and they ran out of wine. And what does Jesus Christ do? He took water and he turned it to wine. You know, what interests me the most is what the people said. They said that it wasn't just any wine. It was the best wine. Hallelujah. Is someone, is there someone hearing me this morning? Yes. Please, don't, don't act as if you have you've heard, I, I know you've heard these miracles over and over again but I want you to indulge and avert your minds, be reminded again, be stand up in your spirit, hallelujah Amen. again Jesus Christ took water, water, water that we know and turned it into wine hallelujah, Amen. can any man have you heard of any story where anybody has turned water into wine. Isn't that an impossibility? Isn't that an impossibility? But with God, it became what? With God, it became what? Hallelujah. And we'll move on. Jesus was still in Cana. And a sudden officer came to him. The officer's son was dying. He was in Capernaum, several miles, several kilometers far away from where Jesus Christ was. And when this man came and pleaded to God that God let my son live, Jesus Christ said to him that go back home, your son shall live. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus Christ did not have to see or touch this boy. This boy was several Amen. kilometers away. He was several kilometers away. I believe that before then, some of the prophets had, had laid hands on people and they were healed. Hallelujah. Amen. But we had never heard of, of this distance, this power over, over distance. Hallelujah. What seemed impossible with Christ became Hallelujah. Amen. He healed that boy 
from a distance. Hallelujah. We are moving on to the chapter 5 of John. By that pool of Bathsheba, the crippled man, the man who had been crippled for 38 good years. 38 good years. And I want to make a point that you, I cannot imagine how brittle already his bones had become because he had, he had that condition for 38 years. And I believe that the physicians at all, if they could ever do anything about it, that it may have been at the death of that man when he was little. But this man had lived with it for how many years? 38 years. It was an impossible situation. Oh, then Jesus came. And what happened? What happened? We know the story. What happened? What happened to the cripple? What happened to the cripple? The person who was lame for almost four decades, almost four decades, an impossibility, became possible with Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. We are moving on to the chapter 6. One of the very common miracles of Jesus. And so one day Jesus Christ went out with his disciples. There was a large crowd and Jesus Christ was teaching as usual. And they stayed so late that everybody was hungry. And there was absolutely nothing for them to eat. Then came a little boy, maybe as young as a kufuado, he had his lunch box, he had five loaves of bread, had two pieces of fish, and said, oh, this is what I have. And Jesus Christ took it, and he prayed upon it, and it multiplied, and it fed how many men? Five thousand. It fed how many men? Five thousand. Hey, it fed how many men? Did they count the women? No. Did they count the children? No. And you and I all know how women, we like going to church more than the men. I mean, it's debatable. And let's debate it on another day. I believe that the women were so many. And of course, in those times, women didn't have voting rights, all of those things. Women were not counted. Hallelujah. But Jesus Christ was able to take those five loaves and those two pieces of fish and he multiplied it and it fed all of those people. And there was overflow of how many baskets? Wow. And what did he do with it? What did he do with the rest? What did he do with the rest? Okay, I'll give it for the, the Sunday school. Hallelujah. He gave them back to who? Who? To who? Then, yes, please. Hallelujah. Amen. No, but have you ever, right, right now, we, we, let's, if anyone has a piece of bread, I believe we have, we are, I mean, let's, can anyone, have you heard of any story? Of, have you heard of any story? Is it possible? Is it possible? I think it's possible to take a loaf of bread and cut it into several pieces. But can you cut it into 5,000 pieces? With Christ, the impossibility became possible. Next on, we're still in the verses 6 from, I mean, we're still in chapter 6, from the verses 16 to 21. When Jesus Christ and his disciples were on a boat, what happened? There was a strong wind that stirred the sea, and they were terrified. But what did Jesus Christ do? He commanded the sea. He calmed the storms. And after doing that, what did he do? He walked upon it. Hallelujah. Is it possible? Let's, is it possible? And can I see anyone who can command the sea? Anyone who can walk on top of the sea? Anyone? Anyone? Any challenger? Any challenger? But how did that impossibility become possible? How did that impossibility become possible? How did that impossibility become possible? How 
did that impossibility become possible? I'm thriving at some point. Don't get bored with that. I'm taking you back to all those stories. I know you, you read them in, 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 by, in uh, Sunday school. Hallelujah. Amen. But we are driving at a point. In the chapter 9 in Jerusalem, when Jesus Christ came upon the blind man, he was walking with him. In fact, I want to read this verse. Right. So, the chapter 9, I'll read from the verses 1 to, um, to, the, to 5. It says, as he went along, he saw a, a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? Is it this man or is it his parents that he was born blind? Then Jesus Christ said to them, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed displayed in him. Hallelujah. It says, but this happened so that the works of God might be what? Displayed in him. And he said, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This was a misfortune that had befallen this poor man, that he was born blind. And usually, when such a thing happens, when such a thing happens, it might, it might either be as a result of some sin that somebody had done. So the disciples asked that, is it as a result of the sin of the parents of, of this, this man that he was born blind? Or is it something he did? And what did Jesus Christ say? What did he say? That this happened so that the name of the Lord will be what? Glorified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And then finally to chapter 11. Our dear Lazarus. Lazarus died for how many days? He died for how many days? And I believe that his body was already it was getting rotten. It was getting rotten. And that was why his sisters were so worried that, ah, Jesus, who made did you where you're here? You come here. You say this man is your friend. But when Lazarus was sick, we called you. We called you. Come. Come and heal him. He died. We called you. Come. You didn't come. Now that he's, he's been dead for four days, it's impossible. Do you know why? Because Jesus Christ had brought other people back to life, but they had died instantly. And so the four days seemed impossible because they had already seen an impossibility. That was why they were still running and crying after Jesus. But Jesus Christ did not come until the situation was hopeless. Because Nipah will not be starting getting rotten. How could they ever bring you back to life? The impossibility of impossibilities. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to say that all of these miracles that we have looked at, they seemed very impossible. But they, they did not seem impossible to Jesus Christ. Because even though it was impossible with man, do we realize that it became possible because of one common factor? One common factor that runs through it. And what factor is that? What factor is that? God. God. These things could not have been achieved by man. They seemed impossible in the mind of man. It seemed impossible. They couldn't beyond it. it could, there, there was no way that they could think or see beyond it. But Jesus Christ knew. And see, I want to make this point clear. Jesus Christ was God. 
But he came to earth and lived as a man. He had flesh, he had blood. When they cut him, blood oozed out of his body. Hallelujah. Amen. Blood oozed. He was man like you and I. Though he was God, he lived here as man. But he knew, he knew that with God, all of these impossibilities were possible. And what did he do? He did not let it go. He took advantage of every power that was made available to him. And beloved, that power that was made available to Jesus Christ has been made available to you and I today. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so Jeremiah chapter 32, verses 17, Jeremiah's prayer, he said, Oh, sovereign God, Sovereign Lord, the one who made the heavens and the earth, there is nothing you cannot do. Is there anything that God cannot do? But there's something that He needs us to do. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to I, I want to classify these miracles that we've looked at. I want to classify them under certain categories that so for example the first miracle turning water into wine into the best wine that was a demonstration of Jesus Christ's power over quality hallelujah Amen. maybe write it down and after maybe when you go home try and see if any of the impossibilities that uh, you, you are facing in your life. Try and see if any of them will fall under, or if any of them are greater than all of these things. Number one, the first miracle power over quality. Hallelujah. Amen. The second miracle, the boy who was in Capernaum, that was a demonstration of Jesus Christ's power over distance. So, distance cannot even be a limitation. Distance is not a limitation. Hallelujah. Amen. The third one, the cripple, who had been crippled, he was he was lame for 38 good years. Power over what? Time. Power over time. And so, beloved, that thing, that promise that God has given you that you are here, you are you are here making it so impossible because you are looking at the clock. And you think that, ah, if this thing should, if this thing will happen the way God said it should happen, then by this time I must have this, and by this time I must have that. I must have achieved this by this age. I must have achieved that by this time. Jesus, let's stop it. Just stop it. Stop it. Why? 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 Because it's impossible for man. So all of a sudden we think God is done. He is not limited by time. Hallelujah. Amen. Power over quantity. The little boy. Five loaves of bread. Two pieces of fish. Multiplied it. Fed all those people. He has power over quantity. Hallelujah. Amen. And so is there any sort of multiplication that you are looking at, you are, you are looking up to God for? Our declaration says that what I'm multiplying, I will multiply you. Is there any, any is, is your, does your impossibility lie with the fact that you, you cannot be multiplied? Does it lie with the fact that you believe that that capital cannot be multiplied? Does it lie with the fact that you believe that that family cannot be multiplied? What are you talking about? Hallelujah. Amen. The next one, the blind man, called him a misfortune because he, he was born blind. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the power of God over fortune. So whether or not it is something from your family or something not from your family, God has power over 
every misfortune, whether it was as a result of your own doing or the doing of your family. The power of Christ, the power of God reigns above all misfortune. Hallelujah. Then finally, 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 my favorite, power over death. Is any of your misfortune greater than death? Any, any of the, the, the impossibilities that you have, is it greater than death? Is it greater than death? Is it greater than death? And not just any death. He had died and his body without a body. If they breathe, if Jesus Christ breathed, if the Holy Spirit breathed life back into a body, that was no longer there. Will it come to life? We need this. The spirit needs a body. But for the sake of you and I today, because of something that God wants to tell you and I, and so he made sure that he did not go and heal Lazarus when Lazarus was sick. He made sure he did not go immediately when he heard that Lazarus had died. He made sure that he did not go on the second day. He made sure that he did not go on the third day. He went after the fourth day when all hope was lost. When all hope was lost. So that today you and I will be encouraged. That even when your hope is lost. Even when your hope is lost. He has that power over. That he can do the impossible. It's because of you and I. It's because of that situation that we are calling impossible. And so he made that happen so that we would know the extent of his power. Hallelujah. Amen. And that very same God lives today. And that very same God is our God. And that very same God calls us his children. Hallelujah. Yet, some of us have been wanting to, to lend him a helping hand. Please, honestly, may I see by hand who hasn't got, maybe you've received a certain prophecy, you've received some word of wisdom or whatever it is. How many of us have not sat down to talk to, to, I mean, to think about how that is going to achieve, that they we want to put two and two together. I've heard people say, hmm? I didn't hear this was even from a man of God. He told me that, ah, but um, Abigail, you can't stay in your house and expect that you would meet a man if you say you want to be married someday. The man will not just come to your house. You have to go out, you have to go to places where you can meet a man. You have to go to a beach. You have to go to a club. I'm serious. I'm, not, I'm, I'm very serious. Yes, you have to go to places in that night, right day night. So as, instead of you every day, you are going to church. Go to a club. Go right day night. Go to a joint You where you can meet them. Because if you are sitting in your house, no man will magically appear in your house. How many of us have not been tempted to help God? No, let's no, raise up your hand. Who has not been tempted to help God? Abraham and Sarah. They decided that, hey, God says we'll have that child in our old age. But we know it's impossible because we are old and my womb by no ovaries. How would that happen? And so what did they decide to do? They decided to say, oh, let's help God. Let's help God. Oh, we know what God was trying to do. Let's help him. So Hagar is my maid. She belongs to my house. So anything that is born of Hagar is mine. So let me take my dear Hagar maid. Let me go and give. Let me give her to you. Lay with her. You have a child. The child will be for me as well. Hallelujah. They tried to help God because it was impossible to man and they were limiting God to their impossibilities. They were limiting God 
to the impossibilities of man because it's impossible with man, then let's help God. Hallelujah. So the next time God asks you to do something, the next time God gives you a promise, the next time he asks you to wait, the next time you hear his voice, I want you to remember not to limit him to the impossibilities of man. Please, are you listening to me? The next time, the next time that you hear God say clearly to you, the next time that God says this to you, and it doesn't mean that you should ignore all the things that God has already said to you, it applies to them as well. And so go back to those things that God has said to you. And disattach that those impossibilities with man that you have attached to it. That makes you feel like you have to do certain things. If God says he wants to make you president, and you don't have a degree, and God has not told you to have a degree, but you are thinking that, oh, what's for president, if you be a president, you must be able, you, you know, there's no way you can, is it your business? Did God tell you? Why are you attaching that? Why are you helping God? Why? Because you do not believe. Because it's impossible with a man. It's almost impossible for a man who is not educated to be president. I'm not prophesying. I'm not saying that a man who is not, I'm just making, giving a scenario. But I'm just saying that why no, honestly, we do these things. I've done it several times. I've sat down and I've done calculations because God has given me a certain promise. So I've sat down and I've done certain calculations that, okay, I have to get this and I'll get this and I'll do this and I'll do that. But no, it is only because we are limiting God to the impossibilities of man. And he doesn't need your help. He doesn't need my help. He doesn't need it. He does not need it. That is what you and I have to understand today. He doesn't need your help. Don't attach your common sense to what he's saying. Leave your common sense aside. Put rest margins. A Latin word in, in whatever for common application of common sense. Leave it. Let it sleep. God has not called you to apply your common sense. Once you apply your common sense, then you are still limiting him to the impossibilities of man. Is somebody getting my point? Is somebody getting the point I'm trying to drive at? Because if you feel like you have to help him, then you don't believe that he is the all-powerful. You don't believe that he is the omnipotent. You don't believe it. And if you don't believe, if you don't believe in it, you can't have. Hallelujah. Amen. Now to the crux, what I believe is the crux of my whole sermon, or the beef of the whole thing, is in Genesis chapter 13, the verses 14 to 17. Genesis chapter 13, the verses 14 to 17. I'm reading the New Living Translation. It says, after Lot had gone, the Lord said to Abram, look as far as you can see in every direction, the north and south, the east and west. I am giving all this land as far as you can see to you and your descendants as a permanent possession. And I will give you so many descendants that like the dust of the earth, they cannot be counted. Go and walk through the land in every direction, for I am giving it to you. He says, look as far as you can see in every direction. This is the NLT. I want to read from the Amplified Version as well. It says, the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had left him, now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are standing, northward, southward, eastward, westward, 
For all the land which you see, I will give to you and to your descendants forever. I will make your descendants as numerous as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could count the grains of dust of the earth, then your descendants could also be counted. Arise, walk, make a thorough recognizance around in the land, through its length and its width, for I will give it to you. Hallelujah. I want to focus on the first phrase. So from the NLT we read, it says, look as far as you can see in every direction. Look as far as you can see in every direction. In the Amplified, it says, now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are standing. Beloved, I do not think that God said those words to Abraham literally. I do not think that he meant it literally, that he meant look, because where, as far can he see? As far can he see from where he was standing? I do not think that God meant it literally. But I believe that what he meant was that Abraham looked beyond his current situation. Because look at this powerful promise that God had given to him. Somebody who could not even have a child. Look at this promise that God gave him. That I will make your descendants uncountable as what? Sand. He needed him to look beyond. He said, now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are standing. You have to look, get out of your the face. You have to get out from the things that look impossible, from, from the physical. You have to look beyond what the current situation says. You have to look beyond it. He says, look from where you are standing. He literally had to take himself from that situation. That impossibility that he was facing, because there was absolutely no way that an old man like him, if he, he indeed was going to have descendants as many, as numerous, that could not even be counted. Then why didn't he start having those children when he was young? I believe that if that promise came earlier, Uncle Bell will be here yeah, to help God. Because God says that what his descendants will be as numerous. So as they cannot be counted. And so he would have helped God. Oh, well, he did cry. But he would have gone and given there because that was what God had said. But I believe that God wanted him to get out, lift him, literally carry himself from where he was standing. Ignore everything from the north, from the south, from the east, the west. Ignore everything and look beyond. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, I believe that we need to see, if we want to shift from the impossibilities of man into enjoying the fullness of the power of God as the God of all possibilities, I believe that you have to see it. 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 And how do you see it? You have to disattach yourself from everything that makes it impossible. You have to detach the possibilities of God from the impossibilities of man. You have to detach it. Why? Your mind is so small. You think uh, your mind is so small. You, it's, it's only limited to the things that a human can think of. You cannot encompass the, the knowledge of and uh, wisdom of God. Your mind is so limited. And so if you do not disattach, then beloved, I am afraid that you and I will not benefit from the all-powerful God. Because we are so limited by the impossibilities of man. And that is probably why we are still where we are today. Who told you 
Yes, it's true that you need to get this qualification to be here. It's true. But who told you that God cannot lift that thing for you? Who told you? And so what? And so it's in a policy that you have to do this, to do this, to do this, to do that. Who told you that when it comes to you, God cannot take away that thing that it will not apply to you? Who told you? Who told you? Hallelujah. Beloved, you are going to have to see it. You are going to have to see it because as far as you can see, as far as we can believe, as far as we will believe, the Lord will give. This is his word, not mine. As far as you can see. And so those men of God who have, the other day, Pastor was telling us of the ministry of a certain man of God who could teleport from another country to another country to bring minister. And I believe that he, he could exercise that power because he believes that God can let him, make him do it. He believes. And so as far as you can believe, that is where it is. As far as you will go, as far as you can see, as far as you can believe. So if you believe in the all, in, 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 in the all-powerful God, if you believe the extent of his power, you shall experience it as far as you can see, as far as you can go. You need to see it. You need to see it. You need to see it. You cannot limit the big God anymore. Our God is a big God. He's a big God. Hallelujah. Amen. He is an incredible God. You cannot fathom his power. You cannot. And so, if you think big things, because he's a God of big things. And so, our, our little prayer point, eh, we have, there's so much power. There's so much power that is just laying there that we are not benefiting from because we do not understand the extent of his power. Somebody, is somebody here with me? Is somebody here with me? We have not understood the extent. We have not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We must see big. Beloved, please say after me. I said, we must see big. We must see big. We must see mighty. We must see mighty. Oh, please repeat after me. We must see mighty. We must see impossible things be possible. We must see incredible things. Because as far as you can see, you will have it. You will have it. Hallelujah. Beloved, let's kindly be upstanding and let's pray. Let's enter into a moment of prayer. Let's enter into a moment of prayer. We absolutely cannot leave here the same way that we entered. We cannot leave this gathering today and still place all those limitations that we have placed on God. Because the word of God says to us that as far as you can see, today you will see. Today your eyes will be open. Today your spirit will be open. In the name of Jesus. You want to open your mouth and begin to speak in the language of the spirit. You want to open your mouth and begin to speak in the language of the spirit. You and I will not leave here the same today. You and I will not leave this room and still place so many limitations on God because in our eyes it's impossible. Hallelujah. 
Rapo soka bada indi besi kabada ba. Rato no bo soka indi bedi anda debe. Rati li bo soka bada anda debe debe. In the name of Jesus, mando ko sabada anda debe debe. In the mighty name of Jesus, beloved, I want us to pray for a renewal of mind. You are going to pray right now. You are going to call upon the name of the Lord to break that limitation that you have placed on him. That limitation that you have placed on him because of your impossible mind. Because you have an impossible mind. You are going to pray for a renewal of your mind right now. We are renewing our mind. We are not going to have a possible mind. Everything is possible. We rebuke it in Jesus' name. We rebuke it in Jesus' name. You want to open your mouth and begin to pray. Man, don't so kadabadaba. Reke dini bo sika badaba. Nan dini bo so kadabadaba. Reke dini ba sike debele. Ran todo bo sika badaba. Man dada bo so kadabadaba. Reke dini ba sate debele. Niki dini bo so kadabadaba. Reke dini bo sika badabadaba. Renew my mind, O Lord. Renew my mind, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, O Lord. No longer will Will I place limitations on your power? No longer will I attach limitations to your word. No longer mando soka badaba. In the name of Jesus, rekindi di basande de 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 de. Rekindi di boshi kabadaba. You want to ask God for forgiveness for making Him so small. You want to ask Him for forgiveness for all the limitations that you have placed on Him because of your doubts. Because of, of those things that you have called impossible. Come on, open your mouth right now and ask God for forgiveness. Even as He renews you, even as He renews your life, even as He renews your spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive us, O oh Lord. Forgive me, O oh Lord, for the thing that I have made. Forgive me, Father, in the name of Jesus, for all the limitations that I have placed. Forgive me, Spirit of God. Mando so kabadaba, reke di di basi kebebe. Mando no bo si kabadaba, reke di basi kabadaba. Mando no bo so kabadaba, reke di di basi kebebe. Reke di kati di bo so kabadaba, mati di basi kebebe. Rato so kore di 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 kabadaba. In the name of Jesus. Beloved, Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 says that, For it is God who works in us, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Hallelujah. And so you want to pray to the one who works in you, both to will and to do, to help you see as far as you possibly can see, with no limitation whatsoever. Come on, begin to open your mouth and pray to the one who, who works in you and causes you both to will and to do for his pleasure. Call upon his name right now to cause you to see as far as you can possibly see with no limitation in the name of Jesus. Just as he taught Abraham to trust him so much, to trust in his omnipotence. You want to open your mouth and ask our father that he should cause you to will. He should cause you to see. In the name of Jesus.
what a God you have. You want him to teach you this morning. Teach you the extent of his power. Show you the God that you have entrusted your life with. He should show you himself. Let him show you his omnipotence. Let him show you the extent of his power. In the name of Jesus, you want to pray this right now. Pray right now. Open your mouth and pray for the grace. For you to see the extent of the, the power of the God that you said. You want him to show it to you. You have read about it. You have heard stories about it. You want him to show you for yourself. He should show you the extent of his power. He should show you the impossibility being made possible because of his power. In the name of Jesus. And 
we give you all the praise and we give you all the adoration in Jesus' name. We have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen and amen.